The summer easterlies and the associated stormy weather at our marina in Kettering, Tasmania had us focusing our attention on the rainy day jobs of sewing, splicing and fitting Morrill's lifelines, lazy jacks, leg cloths and sheet bags. As our list and the days grow shorter, this week we talk you through their installation and some of the innovative solutions we came up with along the way. Welcome to Free Range Sailing. For those of you that are new here, our boat Marul is a Clansman 30. She's a fiberglass 30 foot masthead sloop built in New South Wales in 1969. We are currently giving her a long overdue refit in Tasmania, with plans to set sail soon for the Australian summer. To support our project and to remain notified of all the upcoming releases, thanks for subscribing to our channel and hitting the bell button. Now we've gone with fibre lifelines um, and they're going to look pretty snazzy I reckon, like this, this black spectra. So spectra is like a, a polyester braid on the outside of a, that Dyneema core. This stuff, very loose weave but it's still Dyneema so it's very strong. This stuff's about three tonne it can handle, um, so definitely, definitely us. So we're going with this, um, most people if they have any opposition to fibre lifelines, um, and particularly yacht racing in Australia, they, they're worried about chafe. And when I looked into it, the main thing was that old stanchions that have had wire go through them have actually, just, just, like, the, just like our rig before I smoothed it out, a lot of them have quite rough burrs on the holes where the wires go through. So we've got all new stanchions here, and they're all very, very smooth. So I don't think chafe is going to be an issue. But the other thing that you, it's sort of like picking which devil you want to deal with. With chafe, it's, it's purely an external thing. All right, um, you can see it, it's visual. With, a, with wire, because it's made up of lots of strands, some of those strands are also internal and some of the strands that are internal that you can't see, um, the salt and environment might be acting on them uh, through corrosion to destroy them, particularly wire lifelines that are under a plastic PVC sheath. They're the worst offenders for it. So chafe is an issue with fibre rigging, like on our mast, and it is it's, it, it can be an issue um, with this stuff, but it's easy enough through a, vis a regular visual inspection to stay on top of, and you can always put chafe guards on top of it, stuff that's going to take the wear instead of these, um, instead of the lifelines, or the rigging for that matter. So that's, what we, that's why we've gone for it. Um, we're not trying to sell any particular way of doing things. We're just telling you how, how we do it. Every now and then people send in comments like, look, sort of gotcha questions, you know. We're, we're not trying to sell a, a point of view. It's just, this is what we're doing. Um, and that's our thinking behind it. So easy to inspect, easy to do, and we can do it ourselves. And it's done. So now I'll just get some Dyneema for the lashings and we'll, uh, we'll tension them up and we'll have, our, we'll have our new three ton lifelines. Now all the lifelines are spliced and these are just the, the lashings that we're going to make up for them, or I have made up for them. <laughs> so it's just a, just a Brummel lock splice um, you know, with a buried tail and just finish the end off with a bit of heat shrink just to keep it neat. So we'll use these and we'll lash them in place. leave that like that for the moment until we get the back one on but I'll probably tighten up on this a bit. We 
We'd heard word that our sales were ready and we had a plan for some pretty smart laser jacks to go with our new customised sale bag. To set them up, Troy went up the mast to run messenger lines on either side of the spreaders with parachute cord. You'll just have to ignore the background noise as Troy is busy splicing up our lace jacks. But I wanted to show you all how our pantry turned out because we never really showed you it before we went out on the hard stand. And here it is. It's pretty smart and ignore the sound effects. It's being very distracting. I'm working here. I'm working here. <laughs> We used Tassie hardwood for the shelves and we've just put um, a nice trim there. But the next step to make it seaworthy is we're going to put lee cloths on each shelf just to stop anything falling out when we're underway. To make the lee cloths, I used some old umbrella fabric and punched out and attached eyelets on each corner, ready for installation into our pantry shelves. So we'll just splice up an eye in this 6mm, so this is going to be for our for our lazy jacks. So I'm just using six mil double braid because it's cheap. Is it gonna make it through? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's good. <gasps> nice. <laughs> Tighten it slack up. What I did is tied a figure eight, so it's a loop we can pop over the winch and that'll help me when I'm milking this cover. You know, milking is just moving the outside cover over the inner core. Um, that'll help me do that, but it'll also, when I was like pulling all this core out and milking all the outer cover out of the way, it stops there. It doesn't go into the rest of the rope. So everything that we've come should be from this knot backwards. Very smart. We've taken up the tension there. That's, that's just started to pull into there. So now we just need to bring this cover over this and over that and pull that back into there. Mm -hmm. So we'll do that. You see some of those tutorials, they, there's a couple of things that I don't mention and that's when you're pulling the rope back in, it, it really helps just to just be gentle and keep tension on that so everything remains uniform and just sort of get there as gently as you can um, and avoid it all bundling up at this end. And the other nice thing is to have yourself a nice little soft faced hammer. That just keeps those fibres nice and loose and it really makes it easy to melt the cover back over. If you're using force like right from the get-go, you're probably probably not doing it right. Ooh, I don't know if we'll get the frictionless ring in there. You got it in. Yep. So I'll cut I'll cut this off now. So those frictionless rings, they go in there really, really well. They've got a, they've got a nice groove that fits this six mil perfectly. Um, and that's, you know, like that, that radius there, this, this is really, really strong now. It's bearing over a large surface. It's an expensive way to go. I think those, um, for our lifelines, we just use those teardrop terminations. But this, um, this lazy jack system that we'll be using, because they can always be spun, they'll always give a, a fresh surface. And that's something that Pete pointed out. So, this lazy jack system um, this will definitely outlast our ownership of the boat so we're we're doing we're doing a nice favor for not only ourselves in the future but maybe a future owner because this will last years and years and years which is good So we've had the sail bag made and it's got three eyelets for the lazy jacks to come out of. Now with this, what we've made is the actual lazy jacks, the lines that will be catching the sail, is made out of 4mm Dyneema, so it's going to be really hard wearing. It shouldn't need to be replaced for a long, long time. So with the first line that comes from the lazy jacks, I just did these 
Um, and we're not going to show the splicing because there's so many resources on the net that are really great. Um, so I just did a, a Brummel lock splice on the Dyneema at both ends. So this end I've already installed, so it's just really <clears throat> putting it round, you know, feeding the line through itself, and then, you know, it's sort of that arrangement. We've got that going on here. Now, for this one, I'm going to feed it through this line. Now here's a little frictionless ring, looks like that, that I spliced into the end of some 6mm double braid. Put a, little, put a couple of little stitches there that are invisible just to stop the eye ever opening up. But that's free to spin in that eye, so that'll last a long time as well. So if we put this through here, okay, so this one, the first eye, it's going through this line and we're going to pull that line up by a messenger up to our spreaders and over. I use this 6mm because it's much nicer to hang on to than 4mm Dyneema. Then what we want to do is I've got these little shocks. Okay, Ronston make these little, little things and that's where we're using. They're really nice little smooth, low profile things. So I'll put this shock in reverse. We'll put that thick. With these shocks, they've got like a skinny side and a thick side. So the bit that's taking the most load on this, we'll put through the thick one, it makes it easier anyway. So by putting the shock on there like that, and then just feeding it through the loop and back onto itself, no knot, no knot to come undone. <laughs> and it's nice and low profile. Not that that means anything, it's just gonna look nicer. So that's our first line. It's gone through that eye. And now here's the other line. So again, it's got another splice going. And if you look on the other side, when we made the sail bag, it's got these battens put in. So that, um, that loop is just larks headed around the batten inside the bag, comes up through this eye, no stress on anything in particular to rip, it spreads the loads really nicely. Now here's the other end of that six mil. And I've just got it on this, um, this two mil parachute cord, which I used. If you can see on the other one, it's still using that paracord. I just wanted to get the right length and install everything before I finally put this double braid and did all the splicing. So I've run it in as a messenger line and it's gonna go up through some large shocks up on the spreaders. We'll see if it goes through. I've gone to a bit of care to taper it, <laughs> but we'll see. All right. Bada bing. So that's it, the only knot is these. And I think those little, I think those little shocks do, you know, they make a really nice, neat, um, you know, termination for each one of these. And they won't cause undue chafe on our, on our sails. So it's really, really smooth lazy jacks. And it looks smart, <laughs> which is important. People use this to shade their um, to shade their windows on luxury yachts and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, I think that's what it's from because um, it had like Velcro and stuff on it. Yeah, really UV stable. And it had, yeah, so it had this Velcro on it and like really good quality YKK zips on it. And I think someone just decided they didn't like the look of it on their boat and it's pretty much unused. So I just grabbed it out of the bin. <laughs> bin bargains. <laughs> bin bargains. And now we're repurposing it. Uh, for bits and pieces on rule because storage is a real issue on our boat. Well, not an issue, but we have to be creative with what we come up with for storage. Uh, I want to make it into bags that we can run along the uh, inside of the quarter berth, the inside edge of the quarter berth. So you can still sleep there, but just above you there'll be some mesh bags where we can put things like uh, extra linen and towels and some spare clothing and things like that. And also anything if you've just jumped into the quarter berth and you want to store um, some other bits and pieces. So last night I jumped online and watched a sail right video for making sheet bags 
and they had they have a great tutorial, really easy to follow, and I whipped up my first bag. Ta da! So I pretty much followed the tutorial to a T, except for the fact that I've only got a small dressmaking machine, so I didn't double hem the tops. I just put one piece of webbing, one inch webbing strap in and just folded it over like that. But yeah, it's pretty exciting. It's been a pretty quick and easy project and really satisfying. And I think we'll have, these will look really neat along the inside of the quarter berth there. Just lots of storage so we don't have things like, you know, falling around and everything sorted. We're also going to, I'm also going to use one of these bags in the cockpit. So this will be, this will probably be the one that I'll use in the cockpit um, for sheets. So this will have the main sheet and it might even fit the head sail sheets in it as well. We'll just sit it behind the traveller and we can just pop the main sheet in it. Yeah, pretty good. Here's our pantry with the newly installed lee cloths and they look quite smart and I think they're gonna, we won't know until we go sailing whether they're gonna work well, um, but I think that they're gonna keep our pantry nice and tidy and organized and hopefully stop things falling out. Uh, I'll just talk you through the install. We basically all the materials from these, uh, apart from the eyelets themselves, is has been salvaged. So we use this is some old umbrella material that we used from Merle's uh, shade shade cover that she had when Troy first got her seven years ago. We still kept that umbrella material. And then the shot cord and these white hooks, they're from that um, shade cloth that I took from the bin and made some of those sheet bags and bags for the quarter berth. So again, salvage materials. And Troy put some saddles in there and the hooks have just slot in like that. So for the install itself, we use these um, 10 gauge screws with cup washers to match on these uh, 10 mil eyelets. And they actually lock in really well. Um, and it just finishes it really well. They're really snug with the, the back. This is the back of the eyelet. And so this, this bottom lay cloth, we'll probably have it like this most of the time. And then when we're underway, when we go sailing, we'll just, oh, it's nice and stiff do that and then we can have this completely full of different things um, and nothing's going to come out. So we've actually gained a lot more space. If you're wondering about how we secure those shock cords, that's all it is. It's so uh, it's looped through the hook um, and those hooks I got my side cutters and just took off the little tongue there because they're not needed. It's not going to be jiggling up and down. And then that's just shock cord with an overhand knot for both pieces. And if you look there, I got some six mil um, four times shrink wrap that I no, or heat shrink that I normally use for electrical connections and I just finished it off with that. A little bit of heat shrink means you know it makes these nice firm boot laces and this won't unravel and it's it's quite a nice neat finish so anything to make Pascal happy. <laughs> so I'm very lucky because Troy installed a fantastic light in my pantry. It's an LED light strip that runs all the way down so it illuminates all three shelves and it looks really smart. It was a good way of doing it, just using one light and one switch to illuminate everything rather than having you know, all different wiring runs. It's just one little wiring run. Yeah, I think so. I think it looks really great. So perhaps, a, perhaps an idea for any future cupboards in your boat. Just as a quick aside, um, the light that we used in the pantry is the same as we used for our kitchen work light. So this is a right angle aluminium extrusion with a, um, a strip excuse the ham in the background, with a, with a strip LED running its entire length. Um, for our work lights and the pantry light, we went with um, a Kelvin temperature of 5200. So it's a nice, cool, um, bright light. So this is what you see in the pantry. It's the same as this. The reason why we've mounted our lights like this in the pantry and like that is when you're working, you can't get a light straight in your eyes. So when we turn this on and off, you know, like when you're working normally, it's the light is going there. We also have, um, you know, lights in behind the timber trim here, and we'll talk about our lighting selections later on. So we can either choose to have just gentle lighting like that, or work lights like that. But all of them, we consciously made a choice that we didn't want to be able to look directly into a light. So all of those lights are indirect but this one is direct as far as like our workspace is. And it's the same with the pantry. When you're looking in the pantry, you never have a light glaring on your face. And also if someone wants to get something in there, if we're um, on passage, it's very likely that the other person, if they're asleep, 
will be down in the quarter berth. So it doesn't matter that this is all lit up. Anyway, there we go. So one lot of wiring, it's just a strip light just like that, but it's tucked in there behind using you know, waste space. It's really great. Thanks for watching this week guys. Next week we're going to be pretty much wrapping up our list. So I'm going to try and cram everything else that we did at the marina into one mega episode. We look forward to seeing you then and if you enjoyed the video, thanks for giving it a thumbs up.